All right, today we're gonna to give you a walk around the power plant of the 992 GD3 Cup. This is a departure from the previous generation in many ways, but mostly because this engine is so close to the stock 992 GD3 Cup engine, starting with how you access the power plant. In this case, we have quick release arrow latches, pops right out, there it is. You also mount this up here, two clever little hooks, each side, and there you go, that deck lid's out of the way. And if you look, each deck lid, and actually any part on these cars that is interchangeable between the two, is denoted per car with our little number plates. So this is a throwback to our program back in Minneapolis. So guys back home in Minneapolis, you'll recognize these number plates, but it helps us here at the track know which door is whose, which deck lid is whose. So as we dig into the engine, you'll see one main throttle body here. This actually kind of acts as a resonance flap. There are six individual throttle bodies, just like the road car. Um, if in the event any one of those fails, those open up and stay open and this kind of acts as a traditional throttle body. It's something cool, I learned about that the other day, um, but it's nice to know that Porsche's built in a fail safe to this car. Right here you can see the ECU connection points. I'll show you the ECU on the inside of the car in just a little bit. From a four liter flat six, this car makes 510 horsepower. It makes 510 horsepower at about 8400 RPM. Max rev, 8750. Previous generation 911 GD3 Cup made about 25 horsepower less, 7,500 RPM. This car makes its max power at 8,400 RPM. So higher up in the rev range, which is where we're spending most of our time, you know, high revs, shifting at red line. Torque is up from previous generation. It makes 346 foot-pounds of torque at 6,150 RPM, which from a four liter flat six race engine, it's quite a bit and you feel it out there. The car has a lot of punch out of the corner. The rear tires on this car are bigger than they had previously been, and it puts it down without much issue. Service life on this engine is about 100 hours. So a road car, its service interval is based on miles. This is in hours. We're using these quite a bit more aggressively and pounding on them a lot harder than most road cars. We'll find out towards the end of the year how long we can actually get out of the engine. Typically in a season, we see about 50 or 60 race hours. So if you factor in testing, 100 hours might get us a full season. Furthermore, in the engine, you'll see these ducts here on the, on the back of the deck lid. Instead of scoops, which have previously been featured on these cars, these have ducts that fall into the deck lid. They connect right here, which goes directly into the air box, which feeds right through that one kind of single main um, throttle body there. This is where we would refill the oil. This thing doesn't eat much oil, but like any race car, there is some oil consumption. So. We look at the dash, it says the percentage of oil we've used. If you need to top off coolant, that's right where this is. This might look familiar to a road car. They're about the same parts and same placement. What is not the same is this. This is a quick disconnect for the coolant lines. So if you're gonna drop the engine or for any other number of reasons, you can quickly disconnect the coolant line without having to drain the whole coolant system. A nice feature on a race car. So underneath the car, Porsche has the exhaust hidden with this awesome diffuser, but what you can't see are the Super Cup pipes. This is one of three options that's available on the 992 GT3 Cup. As standard, the car is delivered with um, one big center muffler and a two link pipes and then out. There's a quiet muffler for certain tracks, whether it's in Europe or Asia or even here in the US if the track limits call for it. There are two side mufflers that go in place of those link pipes and a third center muffler. For us in America, we're running what's known as the Super Cup pipes. They're right off the headers, through the cat, and then two straight pipes that kind of shape like a, uh, almost like a noodle, a nice little S-curve. Um, it's all hidden by this wonderful diffuser, but it's cool to hear this thing really scream with the straight pipes. It's the lightest system and makes a considerable amount of power. In the event of a failure, uh, whether it could be from damage or uh, a, an engine failure as a whole, you'll see all these quick disconnects I had talked about earlier. These all get disconnected, and the engine then unbolts and drops out the bottom. It's designed from the beginning to be serviced. In the event it fails, we can pop it out, put a new one in with all those quick disconnects, get that thing black plugged in, bolt it up, and hit the road. Inside the car, you can see where the ECU is. From a technician standpoint, you've got all the important brains of the power unit and of the car as a whole right here. This car runs a Bosch MS 6.6 .6 ECU which is another generation newer from the previous Bosch ECUs that have been in Porsche Carrera Cup cars. The dash is controlled by these Cogworth units here. 
That powers the data system, which is fed from all the sensors throughout the car. It's shown there on the dash, and when we plug into the data point right here, the engineers are able to see every single piece of data, not only from the Bosch, but from the Cosworth units. And that helps us when we hop into the trailer. It shows everything from throttle position, to brake pressure, to slip angle. It's very powerful. If you enjoy learning about this engine of the 992 Cup and any other piece that we cover in these Tech Talks, give us a follow, give us a subscribe at 311RS Motorsport. We really appreciate it and we've got some really great things coming for you.